Hi guys, so in the previous video we did a 2x12 Zilla cabinet against another 2x12 Zilla cabinet and you can check that video out right here. So um, that one's got all the introduction on how we're doing these videos. Uh, apologies again if you're going to get sick of this riff that I keep playing, it's the same riff. But this is going to be vintage 30 speakers only for this comparison, just to try and level the playing field. Ah, that's right, I don't have a vintage 30 1x12. So the 4x12 and the 2x12 will have the same speaker so that you can compare the two fairly. And then the 1x12 is just kind of, well, it's a different speaker, but it should give you an idea. Because what I think we should find, if guitarist theory is correct, is that the 4x12, being a bigger cabinet, should sound more bassy, thicker and fuller. And the 2x12 should, in theory, as guitarists say, um, sound thinner and weaker, and the 1x12 should sound really quite boxy and have no punch to it at all. That's the theory. So, without further ado, here are the three cabinets we're going to compare. Isn't it interesting that when you're not in the room with the cabinet, when you've got microphones on it, and when it's double tracked, which takes it away from the center stereo image, it's very different from what you would imagine. And it almost seems like it's more speaker based than it is cabinet based. Now, my theory uh, of why the 1x12 sounded quite th thick and the 2x12 as well, but the 4x12 is quite thin partly stems from the construction of the cabinets and partly from the fact that when you have more speakers in a cabinet, not only are they pushing and pulling against the same baffle to create some phase problems inside the cabinet, but the other issue is that the, the amp, which had exactly the same settings for all of these uh, speakers, has to try and move four speakers with the same amount of power which means they're not going to get moving and they're not going to compress whereas a 2x12 having half as many speakers they can move with when given the same power by an amp much better and the 1x12 can really get that speaker moving what's important here to note is that the 1x12 has a Celestian cream back end which can handle 65 watts and this is a 100 watt guitar head but I'm not running it anywhere near full volume. But even so, it's moving properly. And I think we can hear that in the speaker, that it's really got some breathing and some life to it. And the reason that I use 1x12s and 2x12s in the studio is exactly that. I want them to pump, but I don't want to be turning the amp up that loud that the power tubes start to get too involved and start to crunch and break up. That can work well for some kind of martial -y tones, sometimes. But for anything really heavy, like 5150s and dual rectifiers, I find that if you turn the amp volume up above midway, it just turns to mush. It just becomes indistinct. It just becomes unusable. But I want the speakers to move, so the best way to do that is use less speakers. And hopefully you've found the same as what I've found. If you think any different, let me know in the comments section below and uh, tell me what you think and maybe we'll chase it up and do a follow-up video if there's any clear ideas that you have as to why things should sound a certain way. I've been Adam Steele for the Hot Pole Studios. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, check out the next video which is Good Amp Cheap Cab, Cheap Amp Good Cab.